here. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm going to start out with just a little look into the Armadillidium clue guy bin. Let's see how they're doing. They've been reproducing really well for me. They've also been reproducing really well in the uh, snake enclosure, the garter snake enclosure for me. So I've, uh, I'm going to have a lot of these guys because that's a 40 gallon breeder. And I'm catching up. Newt. Hello, Newt. Scamander. Um, so this stream is early, earlier in the day because it's summer and so my schedule allows me to do it. And when I can do this during the summer, I sometimes do it because a lot of people will miss the stream at the normal time. Yes. Ah, the anonymous toucan. Yes, you already caught that. Cool. Thank you. Um, so Tammy Davis just got a kitten. It's a boy. I wonder if you have any names for him. Oh, what color is your kitten? <laughs> Newt. That's a cool <laughs> suggestion. I like both those suggestions. Cloud 9.5. Hello. Cody. Dryden Conway. Hello. Supreme Gecko. Wally, you made it. Excellent. Jordan. Nice. Nice to see you here. Kermit the Hermit Crab too. Holly C. Hi. Theropod Hunter. Nezogaster. The Young Naturalist. Ooh. What would I recommend as the best beginner isopod? A really good one? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a few here. Um, Porcelio Levis Dairy Cow is excellent. Porcelio Anides Pruinosis. Any color variety. So powder blue, powder orange, white out, whatever. Um, and... Armadillidium maculatum, the zebra isopod, and any color variation of Armadillidium vulgare. Those are some good options. So, new time for stream is baseball season. We all need a change up. That works. Yeah, I figured I have the opportunity to do it early, and this will make it possible for people who can't normally catch the stream to catch it. So, big bag pibble array for isopods. I agree. Mr. Snake, hello. House of Creatures, hey. Shy Tree. Um, so Shy Tree, there's a lot of white mold growing in with my isopods, even though I've only missed them once since I've gotten them. It's been three days. That is pretty normal at the beginning when you're just starting out. Do you have springtails? That would be one thing I would say. Um, you can kind of scoop out any visible mold you can if it's not like spidery, if it's like localized to a spot and not like spider webs everywhere, then scoop out what you can. But Fairly normal. Springtails will help, but new cultures are particularly susceptible to it. Thoropods in the house as well. SK with OV. Is there any foods that help boost reproduction for Cubaris marina? They're my first, and I love them. Cool. Um, I haven't worked specifically with that species. Wally has. Do you want to chime in on that, Wally? If there's any specific foods that you've found they really, um, they really like and help them reproduce a lot. Boss Mooney, what's these used for? Well, um, these are, this particular species are just pets, but isopods are used a lot for bioactive cleanup in reptile and amphibian enclosures. I'm going to take a look at a couple of other cultures here. I have some exciting news that I'd like to give you in just a minute. But uh, first, we're going to take a look at these guys. These are my milk backs. I really love this. This is Porcelio Levis milk back, and they're doing really well, as are the springtails in with them. As you can see, they've, they've really reproduced well for me. You can see some with the characteristic milk back pattern here and some that look a little bit more like dairy cows, not quite like dairy cows. But they are doing super, super well. This is a fairly new culture. But you can see we got monkey of all sizes, juveniles, adults. Some of the adults are getting fairly large. Um, this one here that's touching my finger, not quite full size. They can get bigger than this, but... Uh, they're pretty nicely sized isopod and nicely patterned isopod. And, and I love the springtails going nuts in here. This is a fairly moist enclosure, but uh, haven't had any problems with mold with all these springtails in here. So very cool isopods. Catching up here on the chat. Let's see. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. I'm trying to make sure. If I miss something, you can always reproduce your question. What's the best camera for ice pot and insect photos? Good question. I just use my iPad, my iPhone, and a macro lens when needed, and I don't think those are the best. I just think those are what I have. And I think 
you could you could do much better than that. I think something with a good macro lens helps. Um, that that definitely makes a big difference in getting good photographs. And and I think the macro lens on my uh, when I add it, it really helps a lot, but it's not perfect. So uh, let's see. My isopods came. They're so cool, but they won't eat. So anonymous toucan, remind me what kind of isopod you got. That is awesome. They came. Um, generally, when you first get a colony, they're not going to eat a lot uh, in terms of what you see in the enclosure and how much they visibly eat. If you have good substrate with good rotting leaves and wood and everything, it's not a big deal. They'll eat enough from the substrate until they get going. So would dairy cows go well with snails? I've heard yes and I've heard no, but I've heard they're, they're a good cleanup crew, but sometimes can bother the snails because they overpopulate. I don't know for sure because I haven't kept them with snails. So anonymous toucan, I wouldn't worry about it too much yet. Um, they really don't seem to eat a lot until you get a lot of growth going in your colony. So you're probably fine. Robert Gear, hello. Ah, Cody's wanting to get into aquatic isopods. Awesome. I've done that a little bit. I've dabbled with a few species and have enjoyed it, but uh, haven't done that for a while. Hope to do it again. Let's see. And let's see, I want to point out, I'm going to be answering some Patreon questions in just a minute. I'm just kind of trying to catch up on the chat and then I'll be answering some questions from some Patreon backers. Bug Slayer, hello. Jordan's asking, I was wondering, are there any isopod species can thrive in an arboreal style setup? I think a lot of them can, as long as you have a good substrate for them. They're not necessarily going to be climbing a lot, uh, or not climbing, depending on the species, but yeah. I would say it depends more on the humidity and the substrate than it does on whether it's arboreal or not. Now, whether they actually get up into the branches and clean up poop on the branches is another thing. But I would say, yeah, totally. Like if you're thinking maybe chameleons or something like that, as long as you can uh, provide what they need, they, they should be fine. And Moombas, hello. Okay, so there's a question, they answer, Wally answered the question about Cubaris Marina. Ken Malinsky is in the house, nice. And Drew, um, liking the new time, good. I wish I could do it more often. I won't be able to do it super often, but I, I'm glad I can do it sometimes. What is the best species in your opinion? Hard to say, um, depends on what you want it for. It's a really hard to beat Porcelo Levis dairy cow for me. Um, they're pretty cool because they're so active, breed fast, get big. Nice patterns, but okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the chat, but for right now, I want to answer questions from uh, Patreon backers. I have, let's see how many questions I've got. It just looks like there's two because I gave kind of late warning, which is kind of my fault because I hadn't decided exactly when I was doing the stream today. Uh, but here we go. One question is from Benjamin Bramble, and he says, are there any impressive or exotic snail species that are legal to keep in the U.S.? And I happen to know that Benjamin Bramble is in my area, so in my state. And in my state, it's really, really hard to get snails imported legally uh, because, and I'll send you a link to this, um, Benjamin. This is a link to the um, American Plant Health Inspection Station's mollusk matrix. It's mo their mollusk, mollusk decision matrix. I'll send you a direct link to it. it. Tells you, it shows you the state and which snails they will approve for being um, imported into the state from another state. And Utah has like zero on the list. There are other states that will allow importation of some. They do not allow any. So Utah is a particularly tough place to uh, get snails imported. There are a few species that are considered exempt. Uh, from that, but they tend to be aquatic species, and I don't know if you're interested in aquatic species, because we do have aquatic species like rabbit snails, which are fairly impressive, a lot of marine species. We have uh, the various color morphs of the Briggs, or the Pomacia bridgesi snail, mystery snail, as it is also called. Um, we can get those here, no problem. Uh, so, yeah, there are some snails you can keep, but as far as, like, large terrestrial snails, the biggest one is a that I know of is Cornu aspersum, which exists in the state. Uh, it's uh, Mediterranean and European native and does not, uh, so it's not native here, but it does exist here, so you wouldn't have to get it shipped in. It's not really big. The shell is about 40 millimeters, the largest, I think. So there's that. 
but yeah, unfortunately here we don't have a lot to go on there. I wish I had better news. I, when I lived in Hawaii, I would encounter the Akatina fulica, the large giant African land snails that are um, feral there. They're everywhere in Hawaii and pretty cool, very, very large. But again, not, not legal and not, we can't keep them. So Drew I says, I have another isopod related question. Rather, springtails and isopod enclosure. I don't know if you'll see this in time for the live stream today, but here it is. I've been adding a healthy supply of springtails, white tropical and temperate, to my terrariums and isopod enclosures. Recently, I noticed there are abundance of gray springtails in the isopod enclosures. They are really thriving. The original springtail culture is still all white. Is it possible that new generations have become gray or more likely still ways from soil that was originally seeded from outside when I set up the enclosures? I think the latter is more likely that these are stowaway uh, springtails that got there either with something that you added to the enclosures or with uh, the isopods you added. That is not uncommon. Most likely what's going on and of course because they're thriving and doing what springtails do, not a problem at all. So yeah, I think your second uh, proposal of how that happened is the most likely one. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back and try to catch on to the um, chat. SK with OB, they've got cork bark and oak leaves. They give them pellet fish food, the good kind, and some sweet potato, which they seem to like. They have eggshell and cuttlebone too. So your Cubaris marina should be set up. So bug slayer, not related to isopods, but how would you search for desert beetles? The kinds that I can find around here, near my house, the desert beetles I can find here. I just go to canyon trails and, you know, foothill trails in the desert, and either earlier in the morning or later in the evening and I see them running around. That's, that's the easiest way to get them. Occasionally I'll just see them in the normal daytime, but usually since they tend to be crepuscular, uh, that's when I find them. Uh, earlier in the day or later in the day, before it's dark. You can also find them in the dark with a flashlight, but uh, they tend to be more crepuscular than anything and that's, that's a good time to find them just wandering around the trail. Uh, the only blue death fainting beetle I've ever found in the wild was around eight o'clock in the morning, again on a desert trail. So um, that, th I don't find those around here, but I've, I've, I have found that one in the desert uh, not too long ago. Let's see. So now I'm catching up. How often do you add water to your ice spot enclosure? I also was using a spray bottle best or is using cup to add water, okay? Nizogast, your good question. The best thing to do is to, based on how much ventilation is in your enclosure, just gauge, see this is my mossy spot and I kind of moved it out of the way, but make sure your mossy spot is always damp and depending on the depth of your substrate, the humidity in your room, the ventilation in the enclosure, you might have to um, dampen this moss slightly uh, once a week, twice a week, once every two weeks, two times a week, you know, I think I already said that, sorry. It just depends on your particular enclosure, but make sure that moss is always damp in your mossy spot. And if it is, you're probably moistening your isopod enclosure enough, but it's gonna vary so much depending on particular setups that I can't really give you a rule of thumb there, but using a cup to do it is fine, using a spray bottle to do it is fine. Um, I have one thing that Wally, a great tip that Wally has given is, he will wet it by wetting the side of the enclosure, just like pouring some water here by the mossy spot, and the moss will tend to drop a lot of that moisture, rather than dumping it right on, because if you dump it right on, some isopods don't like it when they get water dumped right on them, but if you dump it there in the edge, you're gonna minimize that somewhat, and then both the substrate in that area and the moss are gonna stay moist. So hopefully that helps. Let's see. Sorry, I have to chase the chat and find out what's going on. And let's see. I think I'm gonna switch up the isopods we're looking at in just a minute here. Oh, Clad 9.5, got some Porcellius caber, great species. Do Armadillidium vulgari cohab well with ivory millipedes? Depends on what you mean. I mean, you can certainly, they could survive in that setup. Uh, you'd probably have some issues with uh, production, like you wouldn't be breeding as much of them, as many of them. That way, you wouldn't get as many. Uh, let's see what I've got here. 
Oh, here are my uh, Armadillidium gestroy. Uh, let me sanitize my hands so I can stick my hands in there and show you what we got. Um, since I was just in another ice pot enclosure, I don't like to mix. Um, so, here we go. Catching up. Um, you could probably do it, but you wouldn't get as much breeding of the the ivory millipedes as you might want. Let's see what we got. Look at babies! There are monkey in there as well as adults. These are doing well. I love this species. They're so beautiful, and they they get big. I mean, this is this is this is not even full grown, and it's it's a hefty isopod. They're probably the biggest armadillidium. They are the biggest armadillidium that I have. See, there's a, a pretty decent sized one. Not only big but just girthy too and still brightly colored when they're adults some of them kind of fade out oh there's a lot of monkey on that piece of moss there um and there's a, a shrimp shell that these haven't eaten surprisingly a lot of the other isopods have already finished theirs very very cool isopod probably my favorite armadillidium let's see if we can see some more monkey in there oh yeah i just scared a bunch but they're starting to unroll so cool love Love armadillidium gestway. Um, I'm going to focus on that for a minute and let the chat do its thing here. Um, let's see. I'm going to try to catch up on the chat. So what kind of isopods for awesome animals with Alicia, Alicia V? What type of isopods do you recommend for the bioactive leopard gecko tank? I have dwarf, or not dwarf, I have Porcelio pruinosis in mine, meaning the powders. I have powder blues, powder oranges, powder whites, essentially the party mix in there. And they work great. They are awesome. I also keep superworm beetles in there. So I've had them in there for like three years or something. So there you go. That was what I would su suggest. Cloud 9.5, setting up the animal room, building shelves. Wonder though, since I will have multiple next to each other, what light? Hmm. Kind of depends on what you want to do. Um, I tend to light mine individually because then I can control timing, I can control intensity, the type of bulb I'm using. But if you're doing a whole bunch right next to each other, you might consider some fluorescent strip lights. There's some on. Uh, like Amazon, they're like 6,500K that you can get that are pretty cheap and you can string them together. That could be an option. Um, I, I would recommend at least looking that up to think about it because it's, it's good light. I'm using it right now to show you these isopods. Um, I've got one hooked up on my shelf here and then one hooked up aiming towards me so that it lights everything well. And uh, they, were, they were great, so that's an option. Okay, let's see. Wow, I am so behind. I'm going to try to catch up faster, okay? Uh, let's see. Okay, I will try to show some rubber duckies if I can. I, I have a few. Most of them are tiny. Um, but not very many. Let's see. We get a rabbit snail for my biotope aquarium. They look really cool. Would it be possible to keep ivory, bumblebee, and rainbow millipedes together in a heavily planted bioactive setup where they eat the plants? Uh, they might. I've seen people do it. Some of the European setups where they have them all together with the plants. I just feel like to get give the ideal environment for both millipedes and plants is hard to do. Not that you can't do it. It's kind of hard because you want proper feeding substrate for millipedes is not necessarily the best substrate for the plants to grow in and the light that the plants gonna need is not necessarily gonna be what the isopods want you know what I mean uh, hopefully that helps okay I am pulling up I'm gonna try to get a look at some of these uh, rubber duckies if we can because anonymous toucan was asking so let me see what I can do I like I said I don't have very many that are adults I have a few one or two adults and then some Really tiny monkeys, what I got. Let me see what I can find. A lot of times, of course, they're buried in the substrate. Don't see them. Picking up my bits of limestone helps. 
There's one. It's one of my smaller or larger adults there. Right here on a piece of limestone. I don't know if there are any inside the limestone and little holes hiding. Can't really see. But I think I have one rubber ducky that's bigger than this. And then I have all the rest are smaller. I'm, I'm kind of just checking it out. Which is funny because my Cubaris red tigers are just, they're breeding like pretty well. I'm, I'm okay, without disturbing the substrate too much, which I totally do not want to do. That's the only one I'm seeing right now is this, this solitary rubber ducky right here. I'm sure there are others in there, but I'm just not seeing them. So there we go. I'm sorry that the others are not around. Oh, I see one, but it's kind of in the substrate. And it's, here it is. It's a smaller one right here. They're growing. I mean, the little ones, this little one was tiny when I got it, so. They're, they're making some progress. Hopefully we'll get some breeding going eventually. Really would love to get that, those breeding. Um, okay, so. Going back to the chat. It's hard to keep up. Uh, okay. So. Ben Duzuff, I'm not sure how to say your name, but uh, I would say check out my how to keep isopods video, basically, if you're keeping native roly-polies. Um, you can use a layer of soil, that, that can work. It's not, a, it's not necessarily a problem. If you're just keeping natives, you want to use a layer of soil, but put a lot of leaf litter in there too. Um, as you can see, I keep a layer of leaf litter and some rotting wood in with my uh, isopods, and they do much better that way. So I would suggest at least going with that. Um, let's see. Yep. Newt, congratulations on your blue death feigning beetles. These are my, my party mix. And keep the terrarium dry. Um, as long as you don't mist it over much it should just dry out but it kind of depends on your humidity do you live in a particularly humid area newt um, and bible wordpress there are quite a few bugs that i do sell online uh, and some of them that you can feed to your platys yes i raise daphnia i raise scuds i raise microworms and various things like that that you could uh, feed to your bugs or feed to your fish sorry so yeah totally possible Moombas, what's the next isopod you want? There are quite a few, but one that's really in my sights, I want to get the um, high yellow Porcelio ornatus. That's a big one on my list. I would also love to get Porcelio hazai high yellow. You can see a theme developing here. Those are some that I really, really want. I also want some Dubrovnik, Armadillidium klugai Dubrovnik. Uh, I have to, I'm mostly focusing on getting isopods that I can sell. Uh, and I can sell or not as locally. I can't ship them, but I can sell them locally, but they would be uh, pretty popular, I think, locally. And then uh, the Dubrovnik I could ship, and I could also ship... Uh, I could, can't ship Haza. I have to do that locally, too. So uh, there are others, too. Okay, so um, Newt, as long as your um, blue death fanning beetles are blue and not black, your humidity is okay. So I wouldn't worry about it as long as you can keep them there. So Obama cares. Any isopods that do good in moist paludarium setups? Well, a lot of them will jump into water, bodies of water and die, which is a problem. Uh, so it's hard to say. You'll probably need to make some prevent away from some of them leaping. And I've heard that Porcelio scaber are particularly bad at that, jumping in to uh, water bodies and then dying. Some isopods can survive quite a while underwater, but not indefinitely. And 
Aquatic Ma, thanks for dropping in. And Forest Oasis, you should probably be able to use those rocks for an Opaula Tengi, yes. Porcelio Hoffman's Egg Eye, we'll make sure that happens today. Anonymous Toucan. Igris, have you ever kept vampire crabs or planto? I think they'd be a very cool addition. I agree. My wife's not too excited about them, unfortunately. But I think they're super cool. I would love to do a setup with those guys someday. So, yes, if I can make it work. And there we go. How long does it take for native ice pods to breed? Totally depends on their age and species and so on. They d do tend to have a little bit of a slower start a lot of times than captive bred ones for whatever reason. Uh, okay, Nezogaster. I'm not sure if you made an update about this recently, but how is the Morph Project with their A. vulgari going? I saw one of your videos that new generations have become almost fully green. Yes, I've got... Uh, they're doing really well. If you check out my Instagram post from yesterday, you can see some of my holdbacks. So it is going well. It is progressing, finally. But it's still kind of slow. I think a lot of the ones that are produced are low expression or lower expression than the ones I want. So um, I am actually releasing to people who are interested uh, some from that those bloodlines, which are just they're lower expression. They're not my holdbacks. They still have the genetics, hopefully, to be able to get some going. But it's a line breeding sort of thing, so it's not like a simple uh, genetic, um, simple recessive trait or anything. But I am working on it, and I will release some of those as soon as the weather calms down. Dom, you should be able to see dwarf whites, um, but not necessarily if you have them in a bioactive enclosure, you're not necessarily going to see a lot of them. They're fairly secretive. If you push away the leaf litter and you're not seeing a few, though, that is kind of a problem. It either means they haven't had enough time to establish themselves, or there's a die-off and you're having an issue, generally. But if... so they're not going to be just visible around in the vivarium, but if you push back some leaf litter and go down to the the actual ABG mix or whatever you have in there and you don't see any at all, then I say that's probably a problem. And have I got any UK isopod species? Yes, I do, because Armadillidium vulgare, for example, Porcelia scaber, Porcelia lavis, Oniscus ocellus are all species that are found in the UK. And yes, Jordan. Rubber ducky, you're the one. You make bath time lots of fun. It's true. So, Drew, question for any isopod keepers. Okay, two to four monkey in that time, since the first one showing up a week or two ago. Um, two to four is kind of a small number. It's not necessarily a bad sign, but I would say that I usually expect to see, when I see one or two monkey, if I look around, they're usually more than that, because a, a batch is usually bigger. Where did I get my limestone, Jordan? This limestone, I believe I bought it at an aquarium store. I think that's not a bad place to get it. I did buy it at an aquarium store, now that I remember. Um, zero cools in the house, nice. So, Torben Van Upright. There may be a few mites. Most of the little buggers you see in there, little creatures you see in there, are um, springtails. But in some of the enclosures, I do have some mites, but not dangerous ones, not, I don't find grain mites, I just find soil mites, which are not a big issue at all. But um, I don't have parasitic mites, I don't have grain mites, uh, but maybe some soil mites, possibly. Ah, well, there's one, one plus to unemployment, zero cool. Where did you get your isopods from? Luantula the Tarantula Amigo, I like that name. I get my spuds from all sorts of places, from different hobbyists, including some of them are from Supreme Gecko, who's the moderator here right now. I've got uh, isopods from the isopod source. I've got isopods from the isopod chick. I've got isopods from captiveisopoda.com, from local dart frog hobbyists, lots of different places. Um, I wanted you to show you my Punta Canas right now. Um, they're doing really well. This is a new, uh, new colony for me. I, I just got this a number of months ago, and they're doing really well. So I'd like to show you my Punta Canas. Okay, I'm catching up on the t um, text chat as well. Okay, here we go. Quanto, hello. An aquatic ma. Love the color varieties. Me too. 
These are some of my Punta Canas. I love the color variations on these guys. You, ha you see there's some that are just the wild type but some have this interesting pattern to it. Pretty neat. Johnny Redlin. Hi, Aquarimax. I'm new to the channel, but I've been looking to own some isopods. SDA service center in my town said they don't handle permit applications. They never heard of that. Well, if you're getting them within your state, you don't have to worry about it. If you're getting it from someone who's permitted and you're getting shipped to you, you don't have to worry about it. Um, someone's permitted to ship, then you don't have to worry about it. So, um, I wouldn't, if, if you're getting someone who has their permits to ship, you should be okay. If you're getting some in state, you should be okay. Hopefully that helps. If you're getting, uh, never mind, I think that's how it works. Okay, flowers home, hello. And cloud 9.5, you get most of your isopods from the bug fair, but it was canceled. Yeah, we, we know what, that's true. And X Callum Ray, hello and welcome. Got my colony of armadillidae and vulgari albino today, really starting to build up my collection. Awesome. And daytime deer, I'm just watching an older live stream. Also awesome. Andy Jagger, hello from the UK, nice. Glad you love the channel, and hopefully I can help you get into isopods as you as you start this hobby. Nezogaster, you saw some teeny white mites on the surface of my millipede enclosure. How would I know if they're harmful mites or not? Well, if you see mites that are attached to your millipedes, not just crawling around on them, but attached to them and not moving, especially around their joints and stuff, that's a problem. If you also see mites, um, you know, just sort of infesting the enclosure, kind of globular mites, that can be more of an annoyance than an actual pest like a parasite, it's more of an annoyance, but it can still be an annoyance. If you just see a few tiny white mites, they're probably just soil mites, or something like that, it's probably not a big deal. Pillipedes anytime soon? Probably not, because I don't have any permits to get those in, but I hope to get some like glomeris, because those will actually breed in captivity. Um, Quanto, I started keeping ice pods when I was about nine, I collect them from my yard, I have several different kinds, cool. Um, and you're welcome, Don. Thanks for joining in. Aiden Ford Sword. Are zebra isopods really active? They are one of the more active armadillidium species. I should pull some of those out in a minute. I'm still catching up uh, from requests, but yeah, they are a pretty active species as far as armadillidium goes. One of my preferred types for that. These are not zebras, but I do want to show you something super cool um, that's going on here. If I don't know if you'll see it. But I can at least talk about it while I show you this. Um, okay. I don't know if we're going to catch any doing what I want to do. But these are, of course, Porcelio Expansis. And earlier today, just as I was getting ready for the stream, guess what I saw in here? It was so exciting. There are monkey in here. Let's see if we can see any. I'm not sure we're going to, but it's worth a shot, right? There were a couple on this piece of wood or one of these pieces of wood over here. These little small pieces of wood. Oh, there's one. See, look at that. I mean, it doesn't look like much, honestly, right now. Oh, I think I saw another one crawling around. Yeah, those are monkey. Check it out. Porcelio expenses are having babies. That's so exciting. So, these are from Isopod Source, but sent to me from Isopod Source, but they were a gift from Jordan Safala. And he's in the stream. So, Jordan, thank you so much again. These are awesome. Do pill bugs taste good? I don't know. I have never tasted them. I, I don't have any immediate plans to attempt tasting them either. I mean, to fix that later, but there we go. But very, excises, very exciting that they are Porcelio expenses babies. Very, very excited. Um, Okay, let's see. One more question. How would one tell the difference between a male and a female in North American giant millipede? Well, it's a little tricky. You can sometimes tell because the, the male will often be a little bit more slender and have a more pointy terminal segment. That can help. The males also have a missing pair of legs around their eighth pair of legs. That uh, in, instead of those, they have gonopodia, which are mating structures. Ooh, here's some... Porcelio Hoffman's guy. They must be thirsty because they're not 
they're out on the, the moss, which is still damp, so that's good. I usually don't see them there. That's, I've got a lot of them kicking around in here. I just wanted to point out that this substrate, um, I don't want to lose any, but this substrate is um, Permian Exotics substrate that I replaced in here a few, I don't know when it was, let me see when it was. Um, back in, no, oh, that doesn't make sense. I think I replaced more of the substrate recently. Um, I just looked at my sticker that I put on there to see. It says it was January, but I think it was more recently than that. I'm, I'm not sure. But anyway, um, Permian Exotics isopoda millipede substrate, and they seem to be doing well on it. Just kind of, kind of gently looking around to see if I can see any um, monkey in here, any recent monkey. But they're they're doing well. These uh, Porcelia Hoffman's egg guy doing really well. Not seeing, uh, honestly, as many molting problems as I did before with different substrates. So I'm kind of excited about this. It's probably the substrate was getting too old and I replaced it with this good stuff. So I'm, I'm happy the Permian Exotic substrate seems to be working really well. Um, so the gonopods are probably the most reliable way to tell Johnny, but also maybe the most difficult. Justin Graham, do you have any Acellus aquaticus or kept them before? I have kept what I believe was Acellus aquaticus years and years and years ago. My first isopod species I actually bred I was about 13 years old and they did great. I mean, actually, I think I was 12, but uh, they did great in my aquarium. I just kept them like you would keep uh, amphipods. Or whatever they were just detritivores in the aquarium so so obama cares it's hard to say what what might actually thrive there because some of them are going to jump in and drown themselves okay let's see how long will it take for the cultures to start breeding just depends on how big and uh, mature your specimens are i mean if you have mature specimens you might have babies any day because you may have captured uh, females if they're wild caught you may have captured females that are already have a pouch um, so it could be almost immediately but it could also take months like for me when I got my zebra isopods the first time I think I got them in July I want to say and they didn't I didn't see monka in there until November so it could be a few months too of course those weren't wild caught either those were captive bred ones, but uh, the same rule applies is that it, it can take longer than you might expect it to take. Uh, let's take a look at the zebras because somebody asked about those guys. Hmm. How many species of fruit flies do I keep? Just two. I keep Melanogaster and um, Hydei because those are the two most common used for food. There are a ton of isopods in here, as you can see. There's a, oh, that one looks really pale. I don't know. I should uh, play with that one. It almost looks different color. It's really interesting. What color is that pale one? I'm, you know, color deficient, so I need some help on that one. It, looks, it doesn't look like one that's going to molt because otherwise it would just be half the body. So can you all help me out and tell me what color that pale one is? I would really like to know. Okay. I, I need to play with this. I need to start pulling uh, isopods out of this because I'm getting some different morphs starting to develop in here. Um, let's see. So, some species of isopods that are very prolific. Um, Porcelli lavis dairy cow are extremely prolific. Porcellionides prenosis are extremely prolific. Porcelli ornatus are extremely pro prolific. So, Cody, if you use an open top uh, for keeping ants out of the enclosure, look into Fluon and painting that on the outside of the enclosure. Um, that can be an ant barrier that is safe. It's like a very slippery material that can help keep them out. Mm. Licinius, hello. Ridge, Wiccan, hello. Um, leaves to avoid Drew. Well, Definitely avoid resinous leaves like uh, pine needles, that kind of stuff. 
I also avoid, I avoid cherry. I don't know if anybody's had success with cherry, but there are some toxins associated with cherry. So if uh, I'm not entirely sure about cherry, so I avoid it, but if other people have had um, success with it, then, you know, it's generally just uh, hardwood leaves. I get um, non-toxic hardwood leaves, which for me, oak and maple are big staples, cottonwood, um, willow, there's a tree in my backyard I haven't identified, but it works really well. Pear leaves work really well. Um, so we'll see. Okay, and thank you, Wally, for getting the, the, the like spikes going. So we're getting cream and oranges or light gold, peachy, creamy brown getting a lot of different colors. Interesting. Well, I'm going to have to pull some of those out because there are a couple doing something in there. Um, Gaetan, nice to have you in here. The big one with the baby on the back spinning in circles, that was actually mating behavior going on there. Yep, they're definitely mating. Um, there's, it's almost impossible to open the zebra ice spot enclosure without some of that going on. Just saying. That's Especially when this is, this is not my biggest zebra isopod um, colony. I have a bigger one. This is my like backup culture. But they're doing really, really well, as you can see. And in fact, it's time to boost up the leaf litter. I do it like every week. And they're not, uh, yeah, that definitely got some interesting color going on. So Wally, you thinking it might be Dalmatian? Andy Jagger, any tips for keeping Porcelio species Seville? I haven't had that species yet. Um, I would imagine it's basically pretty similar to keeping any other giant Spanish Porcelio. So make sure you have this type of cork bark or other bark where you have a concave surface that they can rest on and get away from the substrate, which, you know, Armadillidium usually appreciate as well. Um, and make sure you have a mossy spot, but make sure that most of the enclosure is bone dry and you have a nice mossy spot for them. And that would be my general advice for any Spanish Porcelio. So Dubrovnik is on my to-do list. I need to get that one. I, as soon as the weather cools down and I have enough money to get that one, I would like to get it. Um, still working on it. I've got Armadillidium klugai Montenegro and Armadillidium klugai Pudding few of those. So M14 SRV, you thinking for, for isopods? You want to make that IKEA glass cube into an isopod enclosure? So Bendo's Uff, which one is better, Dairy Cow or Zebra? It just depends on what you like. Dairy Cow are going to be larger. They are going to be a little bit more day active probably, and they're going to breed faster, and they're going to eat more. Um, did I say they're going to be larger? I think I did. And they're going to be a little less demanding in terms of ventilation. They still need some, but a little less demanding in terms of ventilation. So. And Crockett Henderson. Dwarf morning geckos will eat isopods. Yes. And if you wanted to use dwarf whites as secondary feeders just occasionally, you could throw those in in a little uh, shallow dish or something. They would eat them. They totally would. Um, and thank you. And Crystal, hello, and thank you, Samsteru42, for liking the video. Um, keep mine in a 10-gallon aquarium. Mine for, must, makes for good viewing, but they don't look anywhere near as thriving as the ones on your channel. So, Drew, are you talking about uh, which isopods? Sorry, I lost the, I lost which isopods you're specifically talking about. So let me know, Drew. Um, so, daytime deer. What I know about Dubrovnik is that they are the same species as Armadillidium klugai and they're going to have similar care. So they wouldn't necessarily be my pick for a first species. They're very cool, but they tend to be just a little picky. There was a learning curve involved for me with that species, and so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as your first. Not that it can't be done, but as far as humidity, they, they do need a moist spot, but they don't like misting. They hate misting. 
at least the armadillian clue guy I have, hate, hate, hate misting. They like to have a mossy spot that is always damp, but not wet, and they hate being misted. And then they want everything else bone dry. If you can do that, they might be okay, but it, I would not suggest them as the first one. Ah, oh, okay, MR14 SRB, okay. Well, if you want a, something to clean out your Apache pots, you could totally do dairy cows, and they will do that. And Gemma, glad you caught it. And Sam Strew, Porcelli Levis dairy cow spots viable as a very diet for mantis. I haven't tried feeding them to uh, mantids yet. Uh, I do have an orchid mantis. I have never currently, and I've had other mantids in the past. I've never tried feeding them dairy cows. I feel like dairy cows would probably... I mean, some isopods, I'm, some mantids would probably eat them. Probably not the easiest thing for them to catch. But uh, it would probably be worth a try, anyway. And thank you, Ziggy the Gecko. Hmm. So, cloud 9.5. Well, if you're misting your clue guys and they're okay, then maybe you're fine. But I've heard several people say it, and... Last time I was at a reptile expo, which has been a while, admittedly, but last time I was there, I was talking to someone who was breeding them like crazy, and he said, never miss them. And I stopped misting them, and they started doing better. And they've been doing well ever since. And then Wally at Supreme Gecko said the same thing on his channel about um, the same species. So I think there's something to it, and it seems to be working. And by the way, if those of you who weren't here for that... I mentioned earlier that mine were, my Armadillidium guy were doing really, really well in my uh, snake enclosure. Let's see, hold on just a second. Why don't we check that out? I'm going to move this just a second over here, sorry, to my snake enclosure. And I'm going to show you something. Wally was asking about this a while ago. Okay. Oh, I see the snakes are interested. There's... There's Ruby. She's thinking it's dinner time because it's almost dinner time for her. You want to come say hi? Hmm? You want to come say hi? Here she is. Yeah. Oh, there's Rufus. Rufus is coming out to say hi too. I don't know if you can see him. He's right there. There's his little face. Yeah, now you can see him. Okay, I wanted to show you. Oh, Rufus, they're going to start begging for food. But let me show you what's under the water dish. And you can see that there are babies in there, too. The Armadillidium clue guys are doing well in here. And this is not, like, by any means, the place where they're the most concentrated. There are probably a hundred of them in here, at least, maybe more. Uh, and a lot of them are, are babies, so they're doing well in this enclosure. Oh, uh, it looks like there's also little tiny springtails in there, as you can see. Like, I don't think that those are the species of springtails I introduced in here. Oh, are you going to come out? Yeah. Um, so, let me see if I can catch out, catch up. Okay. So, how do you always do you have a nice moist spot in there drew I, I imagine you do a nice moist mossy spot as well as just oh they're crawling right into my hands now hello hi um because i think you can get your zebras going I, you know what um drew i would love to see your setup if i could just see your setup a couple a short video or something like that and then i would love to give you some some detailed feedback on it because i think that's that's going to be the easiest way to do it um, maybe we can try that if, if you're okay with it. Okay, let's see. Mm. No misting is not a general rule for isopods. I mean, I honestly don't miss mine, and except ones that are in bioactive enclosures that get misted. Oh, she got spooked. It happens. That's okay. They they recover very quickly from the spooking, as you can see there. They just jump back in really soon. Um, 
Yeah, isopods don't necessarily mind misting, but some species, except for some species like Armadillidium klugai, don't really like it. I don't think any of the giant Spanish Porcelios like it, but misting with your Porcelio scaber shouldn't be a big deal. Just don't mist directly on the isopods themselves necessarily. And Nezogaster, I would if I, I need to get a permit though. I would be interested in native millipedes if I get a permit. Um, I have a permit for some species, but I don't have any for Tylobolidus castanius, so I would need to get that. And thank you. I'm glad you like seeing the snakes, everybody. I'm, I love my snakes. They're one of my favorites. Seriously, I, it's hard to beat snakes. Um, so Ziggy, what kind of gecko do you have? And Leala got more pill bugs. Awesome. And Newt's Commander, never seen red sided that had that deep of a red color. Yeah, these, these came out pretty nice, especially, I mean, Ruby, the female, is not quite as red as the males, but the males are pretty red. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, um, same as the Narcius, Chicobolus, and Hiltonius genuses. Yeah, I have some Narcius, I have Chicobolus, and I have Hiltonius, but I will need to uh, see if I can get a permit for that actual genus. How often do I feed my isopods? Well, they're eating every day, but I don't necessarily feed them every day. I feed them supplementary food about twice a week to three times a week. Um, yeah, somewhere around there. That they're always eating their supplementary food, of course. I mean, not their supplementary food, their main food, which is the substrate. Oh, and there's Houdini. He woke up too. I'm probably going to have to feed these guys right after the spring because they're going to freak out if I don't because they're thinking it's lunchtime. So, hi, hi Ruby. Okay, um, so Ziggy the Crested Gecko, let me tell you what, I have one that doesn't really like to eat bugs either. One Crested Gecko that doesn't like to eat bugs, but in general, there's some really good things you can do to get them to eat bugs, and Wally has a video about that. Wally, would you mind linking to that? Wally of Supreme Gecko totally has that. So, um, he's got that topic covered really well, probably better than I could do. So, if you want to Link to that, Wally, that'd be great. So, M14 SRB, my giant orange seem to be struggling in my giant cave roach tank. Hmm, I wonder what's going on there. I know that a lot of people keep them successfully with roaches, but I don't have a lot of feedback there because I can't keep roaches. So a sabu python and black rat snake. I've looked into black rat snakes. I, I love black snakes. A black milk snake is on my dream list, as well as a Mexican black king snake. I need to look into Savu pythons. I've seen more about, I've read about some kinds of pythons, but not that particular species much. Um, what would you recommend as a beginner isopod? Definitely dairy cows, zebras, Armadillidium vulgare, and Procellio and Desprinosis. So um, any Armadillidium vulgare morph daytime deer would be a great beginning one, as well as Armadillidium maculatum. So, M14 SRV. Wouldn't mind seeing a feeding. I need to do another feeding of my garters. I've done a few on the channel. I need to do some more. I have done some live uh, Instagram feedings of them as well. So, I should do that. And you're welcome, Ziggy. So, yeah. I, if I had uh, the pinkies ready, I would totally feed them right now. But I don't. Um, they're in the fridge still thawing. And Jordan, perfect time for the stream. Get to enjoy your lunch and watch the stream at the same time. You know, honestly, it would be my preference to do it earlier in the day, too. I wish I could do it more often in the day, but I'll do what I can't. So I'll do what I can when I can. You know, I try to do it earlier. I like it. Um, hey, buddy, I need you to come back in here. Sorry, he's trying to leave. I don't want him to do that. Uh, okay, so there we go. So, yeah, that's the thing, Nezogaster. I wasn't sure about that either, but I found out it was. Okay, I'm sorry, Snakes. I'm going to make you upset, but I'm just going to put you back in for a minute, and I'll, I'll get you out and feed you in a little while, okay? Um, they're just too excited, and they're going to try to crawl out. You know what? This is a cool thing. Spoiler alert. Ruby may actually be pregnant. Because garter snakes are pregnant rather than gravid in that they produce babies alive. They don't lay eggs. For those of you who didn't know, she may be pregnant. I am really excited. 
Um, so maybe around October, I'm gonna have some babies. I hope. She's she's a young adult. She's not nearly full size, but she she is mature, and there has been some mating activity. Quite frequent mating activity, I might add. Um, so I may. I don't know if it's gonna take this year or not, but it might. Now I don't know how the lighting is gonna work out because I'm still fitting with the the lighting, but um, I want to show you what I've done, what I've started doing with my multi-tank. Now these are my shell dwellers, right? And the lighting is crummy for this right now. I was hoping the lighting would be better. It's not that great. But the reason why is because I put water lettuce up at the top and it's growing like crazy. So the dwarf water lettuce is really, really growing, produces this forest of root mass down here. And then it's really good for the little fish, but the lighting is crummy right now. But Wally, I just wanted to point out, I've got three clutches, new babies, one clutch over here, small one, another clutch over here, small one, and then another slightly larger clutch over here. And you probably won't see, oh, I can see a couple of little teeny fry um, milling around, but they're only a couple of weeks old, these, these batches. So they, you've asked for updates recently and I haven't been able to do them. So there you go. I hope that helps. Uh, just kind of satisfy your your need for some some multis because I know I've been kind of remiss in not showing any for a while. Um, oh, so Jordan, you might get some of the spikes. That'd be cool. I hope you're able to do that. And I'm coming back over here. Boom. And I'll put some more ice pods in as we finish the stream. I've got a few more minutes. If you have more questions, hopefully I've addressed everybody's questions. Uh, been trying. Um, so let's see. Love a terrestrial ice pod be the size of somebody aquatic. Yeah, some of those big aquatic species be pretty fantastic. Um, let's see. Unfortunately, the largest species of uh, ice pods that we can get just don't get anywhere near that big. Uh, but let's see. What are we going to look at here? Maybe look at my calicos. I haven't checked them for a little while. Oh, they need leaves. But they're cool. I mean, their colors are looking nice. But they totally need leaves. Like I've said before, my kids uh, take care of that for me and they throw in leaves and every week to make sure they're topped off. But it looks like they need some more now. Let's see. So there are not any isopods that are spiked that are common in the hobby per se. There are some that are making their way in. But I don't know of any that are actually common. Unless you th count things like Oniscus ocellus or Porcelio bolivari or um, Porcelio expansus, which will look a little bit spiky just because of their, their skirts are a little spiky, but not, not any more than that. But they look more spiky than the others, I would say. But there's a Cubaris spiky species that's making its way into the hobby. So, question from Wally. Do you accommodate for temperatures for your isopods at all? Some like it a bit warmer, some cooler. Yes, I do. I try to keep uh, the cool sensitive, the ones, the temperature sensitive species, the ones that really need it cooler, try to keep them on my lower shelves. Uh, and I do try to keep um, the tropical ones in a warmer spot in the room. But other than that, I don't uh, use like heat mats or anything like that or use different rooms. Although if I had access to other rooms, I probably would keep my cooler ones in the basement and keep my warmer ones up here. Good question. Baby angelfish, Cody, that'd be cool. So what is it with the rubber duckies? Yeah, um, meaning the temperature? And Andy Jagger got some baby P. horridus, spiny assassin bugs. Those are cool. I did a best pet invertebrate video with that species with a guest. It was cool. And, oh, so Muffin Man, you're saying, what is it with the rubber duckies? They're better looking ice pods, in my opinion. I think it's just the cuteness factor. I mean, just to look at them, I like rubber duckies, but they're not my favorite species just to look at them. I think they're super cool, but yeah, I, I see what you're saying. They're not like, oh, this ice pod's the coolest ever in the world, but uh, some people think they are, I guess. So 
So the only one that I can think of in the hobby right now, not many keeping them, but not rare, is Porcelia species spiky. Ah, yeah, that's that's true. I had, I hadn't thought of that. That's a good point. Okay, I'm gonna see if I have some uh, some Magnificus to show you. No, oh, there's there's some Magnificus. There's there's a few young adults on this uh, piece of cork bark there. This is a, a fun species, but not an easy species by any means. Um, probably they, oh, there's a meal moth in there, darn it. This is probably the species of Porcelio, giant Porcelio I've had the hardest time with because Ornatus is super easy for a giant Spanish Porcelio and Hoffman's egg is not too hard. Uh, this one is tricky and expensive. I got when I had already gone through the learning curve somewhat, so they've been not too hard. But they have bred for me. This, these are all ones that were born here in my house. So how do you encourage isopods to eat snake shed? My isopods in my bulb pile at Thontrarium doesn't seem interested in eating the sheds. Interesting. What species of isopod do you have in there? Because mine just munch up shed like anything. Popular the blonde rubber duckies? I don't think they're as popular as the normals. And I understand that they're actually the same species and just kind of a low expression for the color. So the species Jordan is looking at are called Pseudoarmadilla spinosus. Cool. And Slither Skink. You could probably keep Dubia Roaches with that substrate, the same that you use for your Leopard Gecko and Isopod. But I know a lot of people don't like to keep substrate with their Dubia Roaches. With Crickets, I wouldn't keep them on a substrate. I'd just provide laying containers with screen tops. Otherwise, they'll end up eating their own eggs to some extent. And M14 SRV, until we see more colorful isopods like blue and purple. Well, problems with blue and purple are that aridovirus can produce those colors, but then it affects the viability of the isopods. So that's kind of an issue. Um, I've heard of Orin McMonagall was breeding a blue strain years ago, but I think it died out. And I think the reason it died out is because of the viability issues with the aridovirus, but I'm not entirely sure that that's the case but he did have a beautiful blue strain for a while. Um, you could try breaking it into smaller pieces, Christopher, and see how that goes, and uh, that could help. But for me, I, I've noticed that like Porcelionis prunosus will just eat that like lightning. That might be a species you could consider using in there with your ball python if you really want the sheds to go. Porcelionis prunosus. And daytime deer, I do sell ice pods. You can uh, look at uh, aquariumax.com. I have, and just reload the page if it doesn't work. It's got some issues for some reason, but if you reload the page, it usually fixes, and there's a stock and price list on there. And I only ship to the continental United States and Alaska. I can't ship to Hawaii. Oh, and right now I can't ship to Florida until I finish some other things. I got some information after I was approved that said, oh, we also need you to do this, and so I have to do that now. So, um, can't ship to Florida for a little while, but I will be able to soon. Uh, what should I do when my culture gets too big? Split it. I'm going to split it into two cultures, We're separating the substrate into two cultures and then refreshing the other half of the substrate. That's the best way. Oh, okay. There's Slither Skink. If you're not planning on breeding your crickets, then it's not that much of a problem. Uh, okay. Lifespan in my spot, maybe two to three years for some species. And thank you, Wally, for putting that up. And Oregon. Okay, daytime deer, there are a couple of species that have restrictions on shipping there to Oregon, but I can ship most of the ones that I'm allowed to ship anywhere to Oregon. So that ought to work. I think there's two or three species on my list I can't ship there. All right, everyone. Um, I have been going for 63 minutes. It's been fun, but I have to go. Thank you for joining the stream today. And since it's summer, I'll probably do next week's stream a little earlier than a normal time too. Have a great day. Thanks for joining in. Catch my video on Friday.